And I just want to appreciate from those of us at the far west, I want to say thank you very much for those of you who came from the east, from the north, from the south. Thank you very much for joining myself and the Honorable City Vene Raboka who flew in early on Thursday. And so he took up residence here in the Papua New Guinea. His lovely wife and the Fijian Antaroads arrived on Thursday. And uh, we were here since Thursday, so uh, thank you all for joining him. I want to pay a special mention to each and every one of you. Our latest who arrived tonight is our good friend, Vigilant Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Chris Hipkins. Thank you very much. I just want to say that uh, tonight we have Ministers of State, we have Governor of the City, and a few other Governors of our 21 province. Bougainville is our 22nd, but we don't classify Bougainville as a province. Bougainville is a special region. And uh, we, on behalf of the entire, some say 10 million, United Nations said 17 million. Well, ladies, on behalf of the entire children and people of Papua New Guinea, and on behalf of every resident of Papua New Guinea, including the Samoan community, the Fijian community, the Tongan community, the Kiribati community, the Tuvalu community, uh, we, have, we have them all here in our country, Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, uh, Federal State of Micronesia, uh, Palau, uh, everyone, every one of you are representing our country, including, of course, Australia and New Zealand. We want to say thank you very much, leaders of our Pacific. Your coming here is absolutely welcomed by the length and breadth of Papua New Guinea. We have over 800 languages. Equally, in those language groups, you have its cultural structure, setting, and community. If we want to put on a cultural exhibition, it will take the entire year for us to go through each and every one of them. Uh, but nonetheless, I want to appreciate all of you for putting up with us. I hope your arrival into Jackson's Airport were received and welcomed by the indigenous Mosul Kodepans who are traditional custodian of this land that we are on today in and sitting and transacting on. And let me acknowledge the Motu Kodepans who have been so gracious with allowing each and every one of us to be here. Tomorrow is a long night, a long day, rather, I of us. And I know you have traveled far and wide. You have traveled long to get here. I will not keep you all here much longer. I do apologize for the delay and the impromptu or the ad hoc uh, basis in which we started tonight. We wanted to get off very well at 7 o'clock, but as we are sometimes known as the land of unexpected, Flights got delayed. Few of our important guests, including our only strong woman leader, the current family of leaderships we have in the Pacific, uh, Prime Minister of Samoa, she arrived also a little bit late uh, because of flight, and of course, our brother, Prime Minister of New Zealand, arriving just a little while ago. That is why we are here, but let me just give you all some few pointers for tonight and tomorrow that to start our conversation. I want to announce to all, us all that the Indian Prime Minister is touching down. If not delayed, then tonight at 10 p.m. We have later tonight at 12 a.m. It is scheduled for Papua New Guinea to receive the Secretary of State, Secretary Lincoln. And so these are two important leaders coming into our Pacific. They're coming in not for one meeting, but two separate meetings in engagement with Pacific leaders and people. Pacific is home to people who have been traveling and traversing the high seas for a thousand or more years. We lived here before anyone else arrived 
here in this part of planet Earth. Our ancestors traveled on high seas. They were skilled navigators. They lived in and amongst the ocean and the ocean resources. They were men and women in themselves, the leaders, as you come into Papua New Guinea, made a conversation of the entire length and breadth of our Pacific rise up and together and inform, especially those who live north of us, and not, not meaning by geography, but not meaning by those who have been ahead of us harvesting the resources of Earth. Those who are industrialized nations, those who perhaps today by classification we can relate to as having the greatest carbon footprint on planet Earth. Our Pacific is the biggest carbon sink of Mother Earth. Over 161.7 six square kilometers of land and ocean put together is our Pacific. Therein, a balance of our blue Pacific Ocean is a huge carbon sink, within which, for instance, forest of Papua New Guinea, forest of Solomon Islands, forest of Australia, forest of New Zealand, forest of Fiji, Vanuatu, Caledonia is equally a big carbon sink. The entire Pacific has small carbon footprint. Yet we amongst the most affected on the face of planet Earth in respect to climate change diversities. We amongst those who feel the greatest pains in respect to the power plays above our skies. And so, tomorrow gives us an opportune time to again converse, not just with anyone, but more importantly, two leading global economies. Big superpowers, big carbon footprint holders on the face of planet Earth. Tomorrow gives us an opportune time as we sit with India. And I just want to step back and say thank you very much to the officials from India and to the Indian government, and more importantly, Prime Minister Modi for his humility and for his grace to find time to visit us in Pacific for this third Fibic meeting. It brings into the equation a third world. It brings into the conversation a third body of nation, especially the nations from the south, <coughs> south of the equator, not the physical equator, but south of the development pendulum. Those emerging nations, those small nations, small economies, those who come from perhaps same colonial history as India itself. India is the fifth and going forth biggest economy, globally speaking. India has technical capacities from the basic floor technical levels to the satellite technology. India brings into the dimension my sister and my brothers in the leadership team from the Pacific are Ted Opson. It is no longer and no more a two-way street in the conversation of global alliances. And India presents to us an opportune time for us to look real west and not power west. Especially real west from the context of Pacific. We have real west to us, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Myanmar, Bangladesh, and of course, India, big place for commerce, trade, and business. For so long, Pacific 
have looked inward in one or two directions. And let me encourage all of us, it is not a two-way street in as far as global politics is concerned. There are many streets on the face of planet Earth. Tomorrow, as we converse with India, let's inform them we need those who have big carbon footprints to maybe assist us find solutions for green energy source, cheaper energy source, and maybe stop, it, stop talking in respect to your pledges, whether it's COP25, COP26, COP27. I just returned from Gabon not too while ago, and I informed Gabon in a meet of forest nations. Uh, let me stop to uh, acknowledge my friend Pat Conroy for coming in. Vanessa, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Minister for Pacific Affairs, uh, thank you. Appreciate you coming in. I was saying earlier, I returned from Gabon. In Gabon conversation, we were discussing the forest nations were discussing on conservation of forest, harvest of forest resources in a correct strategy, a better sustainable strategy, as well as the climate change issues. And I made a statement in the presence of French president and Gabonese president. I said, Papua New Guinea will no longer come to COP28. For we have had enough conversations and talk, yet nations like Papua New Guinea and many other developing nations are yet to see fullest fulfillment of commitments to climate mitigation, commitments to the upkeep of our planet. And at this juncture, let me say thank you very much to Australia. There was a 2019 PIF meeting in Tuvalu when they decided to bring home their climate change mitigation funds to the Pacific and instead of keeping it outside. Mr. Minister, you are here at the right time. FIBIC has no fixed agenda. Tonight I'm stimulating agenda on the table. Our conversation, each of us come from small islands, medium-sized islands, big islands like Papua New Guinea, but our challenges are the same. We saw earlier a presentation from IFC, the cost of fuel in small island states is very high. It's about time big carbon footprint holders on the face of planet Earth must commensurate their help to small island communities and nations who are the biggest victim to the climate change issue with right level of interventions, especially in the area of energy, offering lower cost, clean, green energy solutions, and I propose a second conversation. I did introduce also at the PIF meeting in Tuvalu in 2019. We are not proposing relocation of affected people, but we are proposing reclamation of land to ensure that island communities remain static in their community and build on and live at their communities. And we are proposing those out there. We will be speaking fair and frankly with our friends from India. The Prime Minister knows our issues. He's coming tomorrow. Our conversation on the stress we're going through living in small island nations and small island communities will be conversed in a fair and frank manner tomorrow. And I want to encourage our leaders in the Pacific. This is the third only FIBIC meeting. There is no prior conversation in as far as agenda is concerned for tomorrow. Tonight, as I speak on climate change, as I speak on cost of energy that is rising, as I speak on the need for reclamation and ensuring that our island communities are safer, maybe these are issues that we face in our deep Pacific. I want our conversations to India be more specific yeah. on how bilateral and multilateral in as far as PIF is concerned. And of course, later in the afternoon of tomorrow, 
our conversation with USA must be also specific so that we achieve outcome. I have told the Gabon conversation meeting that I attended that I will not be attending, or my country will not be attending another COP meeting out of frustration that we have just been talking on and on with no help. Tonight I want to put to all of you, as you come, and for us to meet together, we have over 161.76 million square kilometers of blue Pacific. That is a substantial resource. Fish, carbon cleansing, process of photosynthesis that regenerates oxygen for air to survive and balance on. Blue Pacific, one third of planet Earth has this huge global asset. The world must hear that we stand united to rally for the contribution we give to the balance of planet Earth. I want to ask each and every one of you tonight, as we sleep over these thoughts, we need to secure our economy, we need to secure our children's future. Pacific can not afford to be on its own, but together. We have the wisdom of the seniors amongst us. We appreciate the fact that Fiji has re-elected one of the eldest leaders in the Pacific, Back on the table. We have, for instance, my compatriot of the Solomons, the Honorable Songovara, still amongst us, and each and every one of us we bring to the table our own experiences from our own country. And collectively, using this moment where we are in conversation, separate conversations with the first biggest economy and the fourth or fifth biggest economy tomorrow. It gives us an opportunity time. Not to beg, but state the fact that we, as a nation of the seas, live in the biggest space on the face of planet Earth. Land may be small, but our ocean and airspace is the biggest. We need to be hit, hit, hit. we need to be uh, Seriously taken note of, we need to be uh, taken heed of, and if you are true friends of us, we need to support, especially in the area of elevating high cost of energy, ensuring that the countries are protected from the climate change diversity, and for our people to live where they have been born into and continue to flourish as people of the high seas going forward. Papua New Guinea stands with each and every one of you from the Pacific in our own little way. We stand to assist, and I ask all of us tonight, let's come into one mind and meditate on these few words and others you have to say. All of you may have just short four minutes or five minutes each tomorrow, but make the most of these four or five minutes. And I am told reliably that India Prime Minister wants to have a bilateral with each and every one of you. We will try our very best to squeeze our time with each and every one of you so that you engage with India in its proper context, we also engage with USA in its proper context. And on this note, I hope a better outcome for all of us in the Pacific emerges in our conversation tomorrow. I want to also acknowledge, lastly but not the least, the presence of our Secretary General of the Pacific Island Forum Secretariat. You and me will come and go. And the Forum Secretariat will anchor all our conversations. Tomorrow's conversation with India and tomorrow's conversation with USA must not be wasted. The Pacific Island Forum Secretariat must anchor these conversations and elevate it at areas where it must be elevated. I convey to each and every one of you the apologies of President Biden. I had a phone call with him last week, uh, Thursday, when he apologized that he was not coming. It indicated that Secretary of State Lincoln will be with us on Monday. It's coming tomorrow on Monday. You all know me at the PIF meetings. I do not shy away from issues that need to be raised. I say it as I see it. And my punchline for us tonight, big carbon footprint holders on the face of planet Earth must commensurate 
uh, contribution to small island states, small island communities, who are the biggest victim of sea level rise, geopolitics, world readies, we face the brunt of this one. We're happy that two of our traditional partners, USA and India, is coming on to own partners in a deeper and more meaningful way. We look forward to conversations with them tomorrow. My colleague leaders, speak your mind for your country, and collectively, we would have spoken our mind for our Pacific partners.